All right, guys, here's a quick video I promised you is how to make this display board. Um, like a moron, I left my uh, tripod stand over at the game store because I was doing some quick filming over there a couple weeks back. And so now i got to basically film this while holding on to my phone by hand. So this is going to be awesome. Anyway, bear with me, but I'm still going to get you through the process. Now, you notice by looking at the board that uh, there's a lot of rocky texture in it. And I switched between uh, gray, brown, and I've got some uh, green flock on here. The uh, flock itself is actually not flock, I shouldn't really say that. It is the uh, Woodland and Scenics Static Grass Flock Dark Green. Um, I use this stuff because it sticks out pretty well and it sticks pretty sturdy once you uh, put down a watered down glue on the surface to get it to stick. Um, the reason I use this method for building boards, especially display boards or anything that you're going to use a lot, is one, it's a flat surface, even with the texture on it, so that way you can put down whatever kind of terrain that you want to use in order to, uh, in order to uh, display whatever you want to display. Two, I use cheap paints on this, and the reason why I don't do a lot of over-the-top work on a lot of these display boards is because of the fact that if it's going to be a display board where you're going to have a lot of people coming up at a convention or at a store using it, these things are going to get beat up. Last thing I want to see is me put a lot of hard work into a board only to have it all tore up by some kids or you know some adults that are a little bit more on the accident-prone side and uh, destroy hours upon hours of hard work. So I use this method. Um, now to go on about how I do it. This is actually a very cheap project to do. Uh, you probably already have a lot of the materials if you've built any terrain in the past, so this should be pretty easy. Um, the board itself is actually just one inch thick uh, polystyrene. So it's the pink foam you can get at Home Depot. Set this over here. Sorry about the camera shake. And so what I'm going to do in order to go through it is uh, show you the items that I use. Obviously you need a piece of foam. I'm using this piece here that I'm going to be making a hill for... Uh, one of the tournaments that I have coming up, so you're also going to kind of get a hill tutorial out of this as well, so bonus. Um, besides that, you're going to need just a couple of dishes of some form uh, to put paints in, so this is actually just like a lid to some cottage cheese, so no big deal on that. Past that, you're going to need uh, some water to water down your paint. This I have is just uh, some really simple kind of nasty black wash that I made I'm going to be using for the water. It's just basically apple barrel paint with some water inside of a water bottle. So is that. Uh, you're going to need black paint. Whoops. Stuff I use is uh, apple barrel from Walmart. It's cheap. You can get them in these big things for, I don't know, like two fifty, three bucks, depending upon whether or not they're on sale. So you're going to end up using black. You're going to end up using gray. And this is for basic rock, so keep that in mind. You're going to be using white, which apparently I need to learn how to wash my hands a little better. Wow. Anyway, um, also if you're going to be doing any type of uh, dirt texture like I did on the other one, you're also going to need just the basic brown. And we'll go from there. And then uh, obviously you need your paintbrush. You need some uh, paper towel for uh, the dry brushing portion of it. And then there's the most important piece to doing the texture. This is a rock about roughly the size of your fist. Um, you can find this pretty much anywhere where there's broken up concrete. Anywhere if you if you live in a mountainous region, you're going to find a rock with a lot of pits and protrusions sticking out of it. And this is what you're going to use to give your foam texture. And it's actually very simple to do. Take your foam, just like this, and you're just going to take the rock start pressing down just like so and if I can keep the camera steady while I'm doing this that would be great basically by doing this you can roll it across a little bit if you don't want to have such deep pits you end up uh, putting a bunch of texture into the foam without having to do any major cutting so this is the basic technique that you use in order to get it in there. Obviously, you don't want to keep the rock in one direction the whole time. Just kind of move it around at random. You just kind of roll it around. If you have to, take it in a spot and kind of do like a little bit of a twist and tear. I'll kind of get the camera here. Just like that. You don't want to rip at it too much. You just want to kind of work it around. Make sure you get the edges too. It's very important. And then 
you're kind of done from there. Now to the magic of no editing whatsoever. We're going to go ahead and switch to a piece that's already primed. Normally at this point, you're going to take your black paint, you're going to water it down a little bit, you're going to take a paintbrush, and you're going to paint the top. I don't think I really need to explain how you go about painting a piece of pink foam, so we're going to move on to the next step. I have this hill that's already, for the most part, done, already pre-painted. Um, looks very basic at the moment. And then from there, you're just going to dry brush it gray. Now, one thing I like to do for this is make sure that the brush that you're using for this, even though you are going to be dry brushing, is damp. Um, that'll help give it a little bit more of a transition through the colors instead of just, you know, black and then a harsh gray and then a white over the top or whatever you're doing to mix it. Keep your brush a little bit damp. So I dip mine in water and I dry it out as much as I possibly can in a towel. I kind of wring it out. Obviously, it's not 100% dry, but it's still got a little bit of moisture to it. So from there, you're just going to go about doing like anybody else does. And they dry brush and work the paint off a little bit. And with this, because it's such a big surface, you want to leave a little bit more than what you normally do on there. And let's see if I can do this while I'm hanging on to the foam. And you're just going to dry brush across the top. And you're not even seeing it. Wow, this is a, an epic fail method right here. But let's just deal with it. So, wish I had something to hold this down. Another lesson to be learned out of this is if you're going to be filming something like this, don't be an idiot and leave your tripod at the store. So, I guess it'd be another lesson learned out of this. And anyway, as you see as I'm going here, it's kind of failing. That's all right. We're going to keep going with it. If you're driving a car and you know it's going to explode, go ahead and drive it off a cliff. Make it go out in a place of glory. That's kind of how I'm treating this. So basically, as you keep dry brushing this, and obviously I'm not doing a very good job at the moment because of the fact that I can't really hold down the piece of foam and it's very light, you're going to end up seeing the texture start popping out. Um, obviously when you do this, you'll do a lot better job than I did. But this is the gist of how I create the texture on the foam. Uh, this is very easy, as you notice here, just from uh, the cuts and grooves that I have on the side. This is actually going to be a very basic hill in order to uh, use to slap down on tables for wargaming. So if you have different games where height is very specific, this is a one-inch piece of foam. So you know that this hill would be considered a, you know, Malifo example, a height one hill. So it's going to, you know, count as a half cover for anybody who's height two or bigger or a hardcover for anyone who's height two or bigger, and you won't be able to see height one models behind it. So, very easy to do. Um, past that, the only other thing I have to explain with this is once you're done painting, if you're going to flock it, going back to this here, you're just going to go ahead and put down, like I'll take this part here, I put down some watered down just PVA glue or Elmer's glue, and just kind of moved it around in the basic pattern with a brush and you can be as random with this as you want uh, always brush it out so that way you don't have weird lines uh, going through it and then just uh, make sure that your whole board is down on uh, either like some old newspaper or something to catch the static grass because this stuff will fly all over the place when it's done just take it there's a with this woodland scenics it's very much like a, a spice container there's a side with slots and there's a side where you're supposed to use the spoon I just take this and literally dump it on the spot that I need it to go on. Give it about 10-15 minutes to dry up as much as it's going to get. Take it and dump it off on top of uh, some newspaper. Put it back in your jar so you're not wasting anything. And that is the basic way to do a display board. Alright guys, see you later.